Thank you, Matt and Rona. That was beautiful. It sure was. And thank you for joining us wherever you are. Uh, I'm Doug Moss, one of the pastors here at Pathfinder Church. And I'm Fable Moss. I'm his daughter and a Pathfinder volunteer. We just wanted to welcome you to our Pathfinder Walk Weekend and happy 4th of July. What a great weekend to be prayer walking. Uh, it sure is. I hope that you're celebrating in some way wherever you are. A uh, quick note before we get into it for today, I want to just invite you to come back next week as we start a new series called When Humans Collide. You may have noticed there's a lot of arguing, a lot of conflict going on right now. And so we're actually going to spend several weeks looking at what human conflict and arguing looks like, looking at how Jesus handled conflict in his time, and hopefully equipping you and all of us to get better at handling the arguments and the conflict that go on in all of our lives. So tune in in next week and for the weeks after that if you'd like to be a little bit, bit better at navigating the hard things that are going on in our lives right now. But today, this week, we're talking about our Neighborhood Walk Weekend. And if you're new with us, this has become an annual tradition for our church. One weekend a year where we tell you, please don't come to our building. Please stay in your neighborhoods, uh, your areas of influence, and go walking. Take 30 to 45 minutes uh, to walk around your neighborhoods and to lift them up in prayer. Now, that might sound intimidating uh, if you've never done it before, but I want to just encourage you, it's actually far more simple than we make it. Uh, the phrase that we use, we got it from a pastor named Chris Pavla. He says, just simply pray what you see. And so the idea of a prayer walking weekend is that you're just putting yourself out there in a spot to be able to notice and see things that you ordinarily don't notice when you're just staying home or driving to work. But instead, we're going to walk, you're going to be looking around you, and anything that you see, you're just going to pray for it. And it doesn't have to be fancy, poetic words. You don't need to feel uncomfortable about that. You can just simply even say, God, before that thing that I'm seeing. But then we'd encourage you to look around and, and maybe you're gonna see people and you would pray for the people that you come across or maybe the homes that you come across, you'd pray for the families that are inside those homes. Or maybe you're gonna see businesses, schools, other organizations and just to pray for God's favor on those entities, whatever it is that they're trying to do. And then if you'd like, you can definitely have a uh, Bible with you. you. If you're not comfortable about using your own words, you can use the words of scripture themselves. Uh, but ultimately, it's just about putting yourself in a position to see the things God sees, to have a heart that God has for the things around you, and to lift those up with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's all we're asking you to do today. And it's something that we hope that uh, you're excited to do with us like we do every year. Yeah, and we're so happy you're doing this with us. So by yourself or whoever you're with, please just take a picture of yourself and whoever you're with while you're on the walk and put it on social media with a hashtag PathfinderWalks. That's right, and Fable, you make a really good point too. This isn't something that we want you to do by yourself, uh, either with your family or grab a friend or you know whoever it is that you've been allowing yourself to see even in the midst of social distancing. Call them up, get together, go walking together and invite God to be on that journey with you. So thanks for that, Faye. Um, so if you have any other questions, uh, you know, if you have an issue with something like physical mobility, there's other things to do as well. You can always just look out your window, pray for the things that you can see just in your own view. Um, but ultimately, if, if this isn't enough information for you, you can go to our website, pathfinderstl.org, and there's a big blue banner at the top that says Neighborhood Walk Weekend. Click there, it's gonna have all the information, all the details that you need so that you can feel confident and comfortable doing this new thing with us. There's even a way for kids to join in on the prayer walking. Just go um, to our website and click um, Kids Guide for Prayer Walking. That's right. Uh, and we want everyone to be included. This isn't just for grownups. It's for it's for people of all ages as well. Thanks, Faye. Yep. And um, so now that we've told you um, everything that you need to know about prayer walking, um, let's hand it over to my dad, who's going to give us the message. Thanks, Faye. Well, I'm so glad to briefly just share with you for a few minutes before I send you out into your neighborhoods. Uh, if you've been with us for the last few weeks, we are wrapping up uh, this series, Making Rainbows, and we've been working through the book of Ecclesiastes. And I know for a lot of people, they're turned off by the book of Ecclesiastes because it seems like a, a bit of a downer. <laughs> it's a pretty pessimistic book on the surface when you read it. But I hope what you've experienced with us over the last few weeks is that even as Ecclesiastes talks about storms and rain and hardships, it's ultimately doing that to underscore the joy and the hope that comes for those that trust in the Lord and that know that there are rainbows that are coming in the aftermath of the storm. 
But now here today, we're wrapping up this series. We're finishing out the book of Ecclesiastes, and uh, we're going to be looking at the last uh, couple of chapters, specifically chapter 11. And if you've been paying attention, uh, Warren Wiersbe summarizes the first 10 chapters of Ecclesiastes as the teacher, the, the Koheleth, uh, is basically saying in a nutshell that life is kind of not worth living, <laughs> that life is monotonous, wisdom is in vain, wealth is futile, and death is certain. And that's the theme of the first 10 chapters. But then when you get to chapter 11, it takes this twist because it says all those things are true unless, unless, unless there's a God who is for you in all of it. And so I want to read a few verses now from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, where the Koheleth makes this turn about the one thing that can, in fact, give life meaning. He says this, send your grain across the seas. And in time, profits will flow back to you. But divide your investments among many places, for you do not know what risks might lie ahead. When clouds are heavy, the rains come down. Whether a tree falls north or south, it stays where it falls. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. And just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. This is the word from Ecclesiastes today. Now, as you were listening, I hope you picked up that there's a, a theme in these verses. That he's saying that, that reward does not come without risk. He's saying, send your grain across the seas, this, this grain that you could eat for yourself, or you could send it off on a merchant ship uh, to sell it and then hope that it's going to come back with even more profits and more value than when you send it out in the first place. Or he says, divide your investments in many places because there are risks out there and you don't know what might lie ahead. Or even as a, a farmer, you can't wait for perfect weather. You eventually just have to put your seed out there and trust that it's going to come back with fruit and crops. Because at the end of the day, God is the only one who knows what's happening. He's the only one who can predict uh, the world, the weather, or any of the things that are coming against us. This section of Ecclesiastes is saying that there is no reward without us first taking a step of risk. Now, there's a word for that concept, and you're probably pretty familiar with it. This idea that we have to step out boldly and do something risky in order to get reward, that, that's got another name. It's called adventure. See, at the end of the day, what Solomon presumably is saying here in this section is that life is not monotonous or boring when you have God in the picture. When God is in your life, your life becomes a life of adventure. Doesn't that sound great? Now, there are some of you, I think that sounds perfect. That's everything you want. My wife is one of those. She wants life to be an adventure. But I will be a little confessional with you right now today. I theoretically want life to be an adventure. I much more actually prefer to watch my adventures on TV or read about them in a book. See, adventure is a little scary for me. In fact, I'm just wrapping up a book series right now, one that I hadn't read before. Uh, it's all about a modern day Greek demigod named Percy Jackson who has all sorts of adventures. And while it's so fun to read about him flying on a Pegasus or using his ocean powers to swim deep in the ocean and engage with monsters, that part sounds fun, but he also nearly gets killed about six times per book. And again, I love it that that's his stress. I love reading about him almost getting killed. But when I think about an adventure for my own life, I don't want to risk my life. I don't want to put my, my wealth, my investments, my things and things that might not come back tenfold, that might not profit me. It's scary to live a life of adventure. Unless, unless you have a God who's walking with you on the journey. And that's the other picture from this section today. I want to read again verse 5. Just as we cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, we cannot understand the activity of God who does all these things. I try so hard to make my life non-adventurous. I try to make it predictable, safe, comfortable, 
But the reality is, as so many of us have been confronted over these last few months, there is no safe and predictable in life at the end of the day. We can delude ourselves for a time, but eventually a plague is going to come along. A wind is going to sweep across the earth. Something is going to happen that we could not predict or, or plan for. There are no safe bets when it comes to carving out a life of meaning and purpose for ourselves and for our family. But there is a safe person. See, we have a God who is the original adventurer himself. And this concept of putting your, your grain out on, on a ship and trusting that it's going to bring you back more or planting your seeds, whatever the weather might be, trusting that they're going to bear fruit, that's not something God made up in a vacuum. That's actually something God did first. See, when we look at this concept of no reward without risk, we have a God who actually risked everything for the sake of a larger reward. See, we have a God who risked his own son for the sake of bringing back something even greater than what he already had, the lives of all of his billions of children on earth. You see, when it comes to this idea of risk and reward, God risked his only son, Jesus, and the reward was us, you and me. See, he wants us to be on this adventure with him. And so we don't have to cast out worried that it might not work out for us because the fact is some things won't work out for us. But what we do have a promise is that whatever risks we take, whichever ones pay off and, and, and fulfill things, whichever ones end up just being costly, no matter what, we have an adventurer walking alongside with us. One who took his own first steps of risk by sending his son to die for us on a cross. And one who has now invited us to join him on a lifetime of adventures. And I don't know about you, but that makes me a little less risk averse to know that. It gives me a little more confidence, a little more bravery to say, you know what? I can take one more step forward. I can cast out into uncertainty and not know how life's going to work out because I know who's going to be working in it with me, my God and my Savior. And so right now, today, God's inviting you to take one small step of adventure See, he's so gracious. He doesn't say you have to immediately sell everything you have, quit your job and go move to India for some sort of experience or adventure. He, he, he takes baby steps with us. And the baby step today is God saying, why don't you just take one step out your front door into your neighborhood, expose yourself to people and locations that you tend to just drive past on your commute without even noticing and just simply invite God to show you what next steps he might be leading you towards, what adventure might be waiting just outside your front door when we take a step in faith and pray for the people around us. So in fact, let me pray for you right now, and then we're gonna get you sent out on your own prayer walk, okay? Lord God, thank you that you were the original adventurer. Thank you that you didn't stay safe uh, and content with what you had, uh, this eternal relationship with the Trinity and yourself, that you could have just coexisted forever, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you didn't need to add anything to that equation. But instead you took a risk and you made human beings. You made creation for us to enjoy and delight in and for us to have adventures in with you by our side. And so, Lord, I pray that you would help the risks not feel so overwhelming, but that we would face them willingly, knowing that you are using them to open up even greater rewards and adventure for our life. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thanks, Dad. Now get ready to lace up your shoes and spend about 45 minutes walking around and praying for what you see. That's right, and uh, if you haven't checked in on Facebook already, go ahead, just use the hashtag PathfinderWalks. And again, if you need any more information to help you feel equipped for this, we've got all the resources on our website. Um, just make sure to have fun, keep your eyes open, and your heart spring. That's right, and so now, don't just uh, depart in peace from the sanctuary, but from your house, wherever God's gonna release you to walk, depart in peace and... Serve the Lord. You got it. Hey, if you found this video helpful, help us out by hitting that like button. Feel free to share it with anyone that you feel like could use this, as well as uh, keeping up to date with us by subscribing. 